Uh, welcome, Sheriff, to Thank the you, show. Janice. I never thought of the uh, interrogate by a lawyer, but this is... Uh, Not on the radio, anyway. Me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a real pleasure. We're, we're honored to have you. And we've got an hour to talk to the Sheriff about his, uh, his background, his life, some of the things that are going on at the county today. Uh, that we all hear about. Uh, our number here is 602-277-KFNX. That's 5369 if you want to talk to the sheriff. Uh, sheriff, let's get into it. Uh, I want to talk to you first a little bit about your background because, uh, believe it or not, we've looked at your books and read some of your books, and uh, uh, we want to talk about how you got into this business in the first place. You've had an interesting life. So let's talk about how you became a peace officer in the first place from Springfield, Massachusetts. Well, uh, my mother and father came here from Italy, legally, of course. Right. Uh, and my mother died when I was born, so I bounced around from one, one Italian family to another. And they tell me as I was growing up, I always wanted to be an FBI agent. Uh, I think I joined the Army when the Korean War broke out. And you're an MP, right? Uh, well, in the reserves later on, I was with the Warren House or CID. But instead of sending me to Korea, they sent me to Metz, France pretty dangerous, 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, but I did do some investigative work uh, against the prostitutes. And, and, uh, and then I left, uh, I did my three years discharge and uh, joined the Washington, D.C. Police Department uh, for four years. Went to the Las Vegas Police Department long enough to lock up Elvis right. Presley. Right. I, you know, I heard that, that uh, you, you locked him up for speeding once. Is that right? Well, he was going about 100 miles an hour with a beautiful blonde on the back. Of course, I was... The Cadillac, of course. No, no, that was a motorcycle. Oh, oh. Uh, took him down to the Las Vegas, our police station, uh, and he talked me out of giving him a ticket, said he, something went wrong with a motorcycle. And so we brought him next door to have his motorcycle fixed, and uh, I guess he uh, he really appreciated it, so he gave 12 Cadillacs. Uh, Did he really? To narcotic detectives. In Colorado and so on. Never gave me one. I probably would not have taken it. No kidding. Uh, but the irony of it, uh, right after that, I went to the Chicago and I joined the, uh, the DEA. It was called the Bureau of Narcotics. Right. I was 25 years old. And uh, President Nixon said, You're going to give uh, uh, Presley an honorary federal <laughs> narcotic agent badge, <laughs> uh, which we did. Oh, is that the badge with the famous picture of the yeah. president? Yeah, and then, of course, he died of an overdose. That's a side issue. Yes, I uh, So, but uh, I, uh, I was lucky enough to become a federal agent in Chicago and did a lot of undercover work, which I liked doing. Yeah. And because of that, they sent me to Istanbul, Turkey. I was the only federal agent in the whole Middle East to dry up the French connection, lock up all the opium uh, uh, sellers. I want to talk to you about that for a minute. Um, my understanding is, is that you were at the what would be called sort of the beginning of that whole process, right? When you were in Turkey, where I guess they start the process. And then later on, as I understand it, you went to Paraguay, is that right? Well, where it ended, sort of. Yeah, that was a French connection. Uh, uh, that the uh, drugs, the morphine base or opium, smuggled into Marseille, France, where they secretly made the heroin. Which is a famous movie that we've all French, seen. French, uh, yeah. But that was in the New York end. I'm talking about where the source is. Right. Uh, and um, the mafia, I hate to use that word, but since the uh, present attorney general uh, now used the word mafia, it was banned for years and years. Uh, so I'm going to use it. The mafia uh, controlled the uh, heroin traffic. That was called the French uh, Connection in operation for 60 years until President Nixon said, enough is enough. We're going to stop it internationally and in uh, the United States, and it was stopped. But... Ten years later, I became the regional director in Mexico and had offices in Panama and Argentina. But the dope pellers from France were moving to South America. That's why I opened an office in Argentina, right. because it was too hot. So that was the tail end where we arrested Record uh, uh, and had him... Uh, was he the guy that was the uh, uh, German... Uh, There's one guy that was... In, uh, like a German officer or something who left a lot of money from the war. Uh, well, that's not, this is Armand Record, who was one of the big shots. Was yeah. he French? Yeah. yeah. He moved to Argentina. Of course, the Attorney General uh, at that time was uh, Dick Kleindienst, and a uh, very right. good friend right. and active in the uh, drug uh, enforcement. Uh, but the ambassador, from Arizona, uh, ambassador of. Uh, 
Paraguay uh, did not like me going to his country or removing this guy, but I called Washington and we had this guy removed on 707. Brought back to uh, Dallas to stand the trial. As I, re as I remember it, what, 90% of the heroin coming into this country was brought in through this process with these folks? Yeah, 90%. The other 10% uh, was Mexico. Of course, now it's the Golden Triangle. You know, things do shift in, right. uh, in the Far East. But that was a very interesting operation, almost 60 years controlled by the right. Italian mob and the Sicily, in Sicily uh, and the French. Right. But once again, I have to give credit to uh, uh, President uh, Nixon we're saying we're going to make this a top priority, and we cleaned it up in 1969. G. Gordon Liddy and I, uh, I remember G. Gordon with his own show, uh, we ran an operation at the border intercept uh, because the president said we're going to close the Mexican border, enough is enough, for two weeks. We didn't actually close the border, we just searched every car. Yeah. Backed up traffic to Mexico City. They hated us, right. the Mexican government. Just by chance, I became the regional director. It was very sensitive. I had agents working undercover. In those days, we were operational. And it was tough to get uh, the... So I had the Mexican attorney general at my house a few times, like blueberry pie. So my wife just uh, kicked out blueberry pie, a little shot of whiskey. And I got more done with blueberry pie and whiskey than a big American uh, yeah. stick. Hard to do that today, right? I don't think it is. Well, uh, I mean... A, Maybe you should serve some blueberry pie to the county board, huh? Well, the, pro the president invites uh, uh, people to the uh, White House. He invited the, uh, the sergeant of Cambridge Mass for arresting the black uh, professor, and uh, the president sort of stuck his nose in it. So he invited both of them mm -hmm. uh, to the White House to have a little beer. With have the you been invited president? to the White House to talk about no. these immigration issues? No, I have not. Why not? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. By the way, we're talking with Sheriff Arpaio, Maricopa County Sheriff, on uh, KFNX, 277-KFNX. Um, so w were you ever uh, invited to the White House to talk about the issues here in Arizona, the immigration issues? Not since I've been the sheriff. Hmm. And that's a good question. It uh, is a good question. I'm glad you asked that. that. Yeah. Why is it that, forget the White House, where's all the other politicians? No one asked me my opinion. You right. do know I spent four years in Mexico City. I covered the border from that side. Right. I was head of the federal drug enforcement in Texas. On another side, I covered the whole Texas border. I was head of the DA in Arizona. On another side, so I have 14 years' experience as a top federal official at the border. And nobody's ever asked your opinion. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is interesting. Nobody's called you back for any hearings. Nothing like that. Well, uh, the uh, the uh, head of the Judiciary Committee that went after me, thanks to the Phoenix mayor, uh, had his hearings blasting me and asking me, uh, asking the Attorney General and Homeland Security Secretary to investigate me for alleged racial right. uh, profile. But where's all the senators? Where's all the congressmen? Don't well, we have some here that lives in uh, Arizona? Well, I saw I saw that Paul Babieu was uh, speaking to the Senate, I guess, probably invited by Senator McCain, I would suspect. Yeah. But I didn't see you there. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have to go to Washington. Uh, uh, and, and you wonder no, why. I was just curious, that's all. Yeah, well, I get, they're investigating me. Yeah. The, the, uh, justice. Well, they've been investigating you forever, so. Yeah, well, I think they'll be investigating you when, when we're all gone. Yeah, when I'm dead, too, yeah, probably. Probably. Um, anyway, we're going to talk to you, uh, Sheriff uh, Arpaio, about uh, your thoughts on a lot of different issues when we come back after this, uh, this break that's coming up. Uh, we're going to hear from some uh, sponsors. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the jails, the border, uh, and uh, sentencing issues, and some of the hot things that are going on now. I don't understand there's an arrest day, for example. Is that right? Big arrest day you made? Well, I don't know. We locked up six more uh, people working in the, uh, in the laundry. Uh, six out of seven were here illegally with phony identification, which I take very serious. Right. Yeah, I saw that in the paper today. And we're going to talk to you also about uh, some of these issues that are confronting all of us about uh, the immigration laws and SB 1070. When we come back from this break, uh, we'll be talking with Sheriff Arpaio. This is Dennis Wilnichak, and we're here on Legal Ease every week from 4 to 5, leading into Lou Dobbs. So we've got 
the sheriff of Maricopa County. We're honored to uh, talk to him for the hour. Uh, anybody wants to call up, you're free to do so. 277-KFNX, that's 277-5369. We've been talking to the sheriff about his background. And, uh, Sheriff, what, when your parents uh, came over here from Italy, that was like when, in the early 20s, right? Um, why did they go to Springfield, Massachusetts? How did they wind up there? Well, you know how it is uh, when you're living in Italy. Uh, you have friends that have come into the United States prior to, and uh, uh, my father uh, and mother settled in Springfield, Massachusetts. A lot of Italians there. I see. Uh, and uh, what, what, what did your father do there? My father opened up an Italian grocery store. And did you work there? Hard. Yeah, yeah and, uh, when I was going to high school, I delivered all the groceries. Uh, I, I am a senior citizen. Right. Some people say, how come you look so young, sure? Because I drank a lot of olive oil and delivered an olive oil. That's why I look young. So, <laughs> and you still do, right? <laughs> Let's so, work. <laughs> so I worked hard. Uh, I wasn't the best student in high school. I played all the sports. I had to work hard to get a C average. Uh, but Did I you always know you wanted to go into law enforcement? Uh, when I was growing up, as I mentioned, uh, they all say he wants to be an FBI agent. But in high school, I don't think I really, uh, I, I, I was going to join the Army. I joined the Army the day the Korean War broke out about that time, the high school graduate and uh, turned 18. Uh, and uh, I had a rough, not a rough life. I bounced around from three different families, and my father remarried when I was 12, so I had a stepmother. Oh, I see. Uh, that's hard to lose your mother at a young age like that. I, I never saw my mother. never saw your mother. Died in childbirth. She gave her life uh, for me because the doctor said, if you don't have an abortion, you're going to die. That's why I'm a big uh, right to life. Yeah. Plus, my daughter has adopted uh, grandkids. I'm not going to get into it for security reasons. Yeah. Let me say one thing. They're from all different races. Right. So when all those demonstrators every day for two and a half years in front of the Wells Fargo building and Mary Worlds, Will Cox, and everybody marching down the street calling me a racist, Hitler, every name in the book, you know, be my guest. Well, you know, I was going to ask you about that, actually. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, actually, my son Jack was mentioning that to me uh, before the show. Uh, Jack, you were talking about the fact that people demonstrate downtown. He lives at the Orpheum Lofts right across the street. Right. So you see these people demonstrating and calling the sheriff names all the time. Sometimes it's really disgusting and deafening. Uh, I, I see that when I'm in court at uh, lunch hour. But you were asking me uh, how the sheriff must react to that, right? I, I can barely even deal with it. I, I live down there and uh, I can't even go home. I can't even go home for lunch because I, I hear it. I, it's distracting. How do you? How does that affect you? Do you do you avoid these people or? No, I walk right through them. I should send them a check every uh, week. Uh, had Sharpton come down and lead 10,000 people against me last year, along with Mary Rose Wilcox. That only makes you more popular, right? Board of Supervisors. Uh, and uh, and uh, I had him in my office. I spent a half hour. With Sharpton? Of course. Well, that was After he got done marching, yeah. What did you talk to him well, about? I was a little blinded by all his jewelry, but I, I, I got by that. But he's a reverend, so he can get away with that. Yeah, well, yeah, but the, I, I love the guy. I said, come on back. I raised $50,000 that day, and my polls went up another 50%. Oh, I see. So you love him because the more he comes yeah. over here, the more people I want to send him a first-class airline ticket. <laughs> come on back. So they think they're hurting me, these guys? Right. I wonder who's paying them, because from 12 to 1 on the head, Every day they're out there. Right. They don't even him. work overtime. I've seen him and heard him, but, uh, and the guy who speaks can hardly speak English. But the thing about it is, is that uh, it's probably the same people at picket uh, companies, because those people are paid too, I understand. You know, the ones that put the signs up, shame on so and so. I decided to strike down there today. They're, they're striking right outside the, uh, the Gold's Gym, just a block away from the Los Fargo building. Striking one of the employers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the same people, and they just pick them up and. Uh, well, it's not the same people in Nashville, New Hampshire, when I was up there four months ago, get talking to a thousand Republicans, because everybody thinks I'm running for president because I went to New Hampshire. But I had 200 uh, uh, people up there. And, uh, every, everywhere I go, I get demonstrated, which I like, because I go right in the midst of them. You're not shy about it. You go right in the midst of them. As long as there's television there. Radio, <laughs> I don't care. But television is okay. Radio is not a big deal anymore, right? But uh, anyway, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Um, but... Let me just ask you uh, about that. No, you mentioned.
mentioned that you're in New Hampshire. Uh, what is what are your plans in the future? Do you want to run for Senate? Are you thinking about that? Well, Dennis, every four years as you've been following my career and helping me on uh, some great legal advice, I want to thank you. Thank you. Uh, for that. You're an honorable, uh, straight uh, thank you. lawyer, and I hope your son uh, He'll Jack, in the uh, listens to his dad and takes some advice uh, from his dad on ethics and loyalty and so on. Thank you. Uh, but the um, uh, every four years, governorships come up, and everybody says, run for governor. I could be the governor. Uh, now the U.S. Senate is open up. And your numbers are higher than anyone's, really. Well, I haven't you know, talked about the polls, but it, I, I know they're high because all the people come to me for my endorsement. Right. I think I've endorsed 24 people just locally, but across the nation. I was up in Vegas supporting uh, uh, Sarah Angle. I guess, in fact, I just saw her uh, in San Francisco, the three Joes, Joe the Plumber, myself, and Joe Miller. <laughs> Fun well, i got to tell you, honestly, I was talking to a friend of mine who I hadn't seen since I was a kid in New York today, and he knew who you were, so your reputation is all over the place. Well, i got friends here today. I'm trying to get them here. They've been doing a documentary. i got the New York Times here today. You know, yeah. the New York Times is not going to say I'm the greatest sheriff in the universe. They're going to, of course not. But, but that's great. It helps you. It'll be on the front page uh, probably uh, this week, the New York Times. I was on Jeopardy. Uh, yesterday, how many people make Jeopardy? You're on Jeopardy? Yeah. Doing what? I don't know. They had a contest. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people called. And they had a contest about pink underwear. They said, do you know the, the name of the sheriff that puts the names in pink underwear? A guy says, yeah, Joe Arpaio. So I, I don't know how much money he wants. That's great. So, you know, I get on the uh, Inside Edition. going to do a thing uh, with Steven Seagal. Right. Claiming we knocked out doors or a house to get... A guy with chickens. Yeah, uh, Steven Seagal. Now I, I, we, I saw him with you recently. He is now uh, uh, taking that really seriously. I mean, he was in a uniform and he was really talking about his guys. And what is going on with that? Hey, he works for me. Yeah, what is the story? Sure what he do. He's doing a, also. He's doing an A and E story that he did in Louisiana. Lawman. Yeah, but the sheriff died. I see. Uh, and the other sheriff doesn't like him. So someone introduced him to me, and I said, Yeah, let him do his show. So he's taking a little heat, but and I'm taking some heat, you know, whatever I So do. that's going to be on, like, next season? Or? No, it's coming up uh, probably in the fall. It's in the, it's in the hopper. Man. Does he have you on the show and stuff? Well, well, they, they had me on uh, knocking down a door. Uh, oh, that was great. It's a uh, cockfighting yeah. uh, ring. Right. And, and uh, the guy uh, was dangerous, regardless of what you hear. Right. Uh, Supposed to have a guns in there, and was arrested previous for the same subject out on probation. And uh, I didn't know we were going to have our SWAT team there, but because of the uh, danger involved, we sent our SWAT team out every day. The police send SWAT teams out because I go after 150 well. roosters <laughs> involved in the, uh, the, the cockfighting yeah. and the bad guy. Well, whatever you do is going to generate uh, some kind of controversy. That's just the way it is, and you're used to that by now, I'm sure. Right, whatever you do is going to be criticized or put, you know, put down by somebody. That's just like yeah. But Dennis, I feel comfortable with myself. Right, I've been uh, 50 years in law enforcement, 18 years as a sheriff. Uh, I you don't back with, down. You don't back down. Well, why should I? I got the law on my side. Uh, my people do a good job, uh, regardless of all the heat that you hear. Uh, well, there's a lot of heat, but but so far nothing's happened. So yeah, well, they they go to they go to feds and everybody. Yeah, they like announcing. I guess yeah, there's a bunch of stuff against the wall, hoping that something sticks. Yeah. Well, you weathered a long time right now. So what is it? How many years now? Is I'm it going on twenty. Twenty years as the sheriff, Mason. And you have plans to stay as the sheriff? Well, no, definitely running again, 110 yeah. percent for all those critics. Yeah. Uh, if I don't run for uh, the Senate. U.S. Senate. Well. What are your thoughts about uh, the Senate situation right now? Do you have any thoughts on that? Mixed emotions. Uh, I spent three tours in Washington. I don't really like Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, Not yeah. a great place to live, yeah. What's the Senate? What they got? The four people that work for them, they talk. I can talk as a sheriff. Also, I can. I have a gun and badge. Yeah, you can so I can force the law. Yeah, I, I talk and I have action. Right. Uh, I, the only reason I might consider it because... Uh, Boy, I'd have a great platform right up Pennsylvania Avenue, right? Yeah, the problem with being a legislator is that's all you are. Is you just want to make and you sit there and talk. Uh, like you said, there's not a lot of action right now. You're in charge of a big office and you can do things and bring. bring there's only 
one sheriff uh, in Maricopa County is a hundred senator. Exactly, only one, only one sheriff. And uh, I want to talk. We, we uh, we're going to have to take a break soon, but I want to talk to you also about this uh, border fence. Did you see today the uh, two miles securing two miles border? You think that's going to do any good? No. Why not? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. It's going to be great if you have a hardware store. Yeah. They'll be selling you more ladders and shovels. And somebody's going to make out the economy, right? They'll go down underneath, right? Or catapult over it. Yeah. Secure the border. Secure the border first. So you're not building. You're not building a dam. I don't agree with that. Yeah. No. That's How would you line. secure real quickly? I can't say very quickly okay. because I have to go back to Mexico and Turkey, which I started to talk about a, a word call operation. All right, we're going to come back to that. Uh, this is Dennis Wolinchek, the Sheriff Joe Arpaio on KFNX. And after these messages, Dennis Wolinchek on KFNX. And uh, we're here with uh, Sheriff Arpaio. Uh, sheriff Joe Arpaio, our 20 year sheriff from Maricopa County. Uh, Jack Wolinchek is here with me as well. And uh, we're talking to the sheriff about his background. And sheriff, I want to ask you about the uh, moving on to the jails. Uh, obviously, you're famous worldwide for your uh, treatment of the prisoners in jails. I guess. Do they have a radio station in the jail, by the way? Well, I have KJO. You got KFNX, and I got KJOE. Yeah, KJOE. What do you play? What do you play on KJO? Well, we give them a good uh, educational program. Uh, I used to play Newt Gingrich, uh, <laughs> Cruel and Unusual Punishment, for three years. So, uh, <laughs> then it became nothing, so I pulled out trying to get uh, uh, President Clinton's. Something that was an hour. Speeches by President Clinton. Yeah, well, uh, Gingrich, I bought the $150, uh, uh, you know, the uh, America. He had a nice uh, number of tapes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what we put That's what put them to sleep. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I think it's a good touch. We have a drug prevention program, probably the best in the United States, the only high school in the nation, under a sheriff, read to me, mommy, Girl Scouts behind bars. Dennis, I have all this, but nobody wants to nobody talk cares about, about it. All they do is say someone died in your jail, right. or you're being sued, and it's all you hear about. Yeah, well, that's why you're here today, is to put out the other the other side of the story. Let's talk about uh, Operation Desert Sky, which, as I understand, is a volunteer effort to patrol the border using aircraft. Uh, do, do you know anything about that? And, uh, do I know? It's my operation. Well, that's why I'm asking. No. Well, you know, we've uh, arrested... Uh, Detained, uh, investigated uh, on the streets and in the jails. Forty-six thousand illegal aliens, probably one quarter of the whole country. When you talk about local law enforcement, uh, this is just another operation. Uh, this morning we hit another business. We did payway last month, and now we hit this one. Uh, yeah, a lot of the business people. We had it on the head of the Chamber of Commerce a few weeks ago, and uh, a lot of the business people, as you know, are a little upset about some of these things. But why is it important for you to, to go after these businesses? Well, I'll tell you the main reason, uh, because the employer sanction is very weak. It's a civil violation. But the uh, out of the 500 that we've arrested, uh, about two-thirds have false identification. Uh, this morning, we arrested six out of the seven employees working there, all with false ID. And that may be why we're number one in the nation, for people stealing your Social Security. So I think it's a bigger picture than just locking up dishwashers like the mayor and other politicians in Phoenix uh, accuse me of. So the majority have false identification. Well, look, knowing you as I have for years, you're not a racist, and that's just absurd for anybody to, to even apply that. They do, but it's absurd. The reality is, as we were talking, your family came over here, obviously they came over here legally, but shortly after they came over here, we were talking during the break, there, there was a law passed that would prevent uh, Italian immigrants from coming over. Uh, so I know your personal feelings that, as far as immigration is concerned, if you come here legally, you're, you're, you're fine with that. The only issue is you can't be here Ill illegally. That's as simple as you can say it. How can I be a racist when my four my grandkids are from all different races? I'm not going to go too far because of security. Yeah. Uh, my daughter-in-law, my son just married a Hispanic. So I don't know. But you know what? I don't care. Let them call me anything they want. When they can't stop you through the courts or through the political system, they, they have to call you racist. What else do they have? Well, the one thing I, I don't understand, maybe you can shed some light on this. Uh, by the way, we're talking to Sheriff Joe, Joe Pyle. 
Aaron Trapp and X is Dennis Wolinchak. The one thing I don't understand, Sheriff, is how can anybody argue against being here legally? I don't really understand that conceptually. Do you? I mean, I don't understand how anyone could argue that it's good to be here illegally. Obviously, it's not. It's illegal. Well, you're a great lawyer, and you know what illegal means. You know what the law sure. is. You do know when you cross the border, you violate right. the law. And your job is to do deal with that. But I'll tell you that what the problem is, and I get very uh, discouraged sometimes at uh, elected officials. Uh, there's two words that I mentioned previously, secure, but the other word is first, secure the border first. So they push everything on the feds, blame the feds for everything, and then we'll talk about immigration reform. Because they don't want to do what I just did this morning, is arrest people working in the workplace here illegally. They want amnesty. That's why they keep blaming the border. Now, they should say secure the border and also enforce the illegal immigration laws in the interior. Yeah, but here's the problem. Okay. Then you get, what, yesterday the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals saying that basically it's not a state's job. It's a, it's a federal, uh, exclusively a federal job yeah. to take care of immigration. Well, we've locked up 2,500 smugglers under the state law. We're the only ones doing that. Plus 500 people working in the workplace. You think I'm worried about uh, the federal government in the 1070? I'm still enforcing the state laws and the federal laws. So I, I, I don't. That's not interfering with us doing our job. Yeah. Now, let me ask you. You know, there's been a lot of uh, things in the news. Janet Napolitano saying the border is safer than ever. Things of that nature. Do you think that? Well, I'm not going to uh, criticize uh, her, even though a lot of people would like me to do it, uh, because I'm an ex-federal guy myself. Also, I worked with her when she was U.S. Attorney, Attorney General. I mean, she's the one that took the money away from me uh, her last year in office, $1.6 million. I don't know if she's behind all these uh, investigations. The U.S. Attorney I've known for years. We used to eat spaghetti together. Uh, but now it's a difficult position. The U.S. Attorney used to be her chief assistant, right? Yeah, but yeah. now it's a little difficult with what's yeah. going on. Of course. Uh, but the um, the only problem I have, if it's secure, why did we arrest 180 people, smugglers, coming into our area in the last two weeks? Yeah. Every time I send my troops out there, we're arresting illegals being smuggled into the uh, Maricopa, and we're the only agency... And thanks to Bill Montgomery, that continues the trend that will prosecute the co-conspirators. You do know this ex guy Romney wouldn't do any of that. Right. So when we arrest uh, a, a load, we call it, we uh, lock everybody up. We got the problem causing the information, but everybody else turns them over to ICE. Let me ask you something. Do you think? And I know there's a big criticism. Uh, do you think that doing this is making us safer, or the criticism is that you're just going after, like you said, dishwashers, people like this who are menial laborers who are coming over here to look for work. Why is it important to you? I mean, why do you think that we're, we're solving a problem by arresting these people? Dennis, it's very difficult for me to brag, believe it or not. You know, I, I have an ego, but I'm very careful. But the only thing I can say, since we've been cracking down on crime suppression, going into Phoenix and Mesa and everywhere else, locking up illegal aliens, that's at the same period of time when crime went down 19%. All the mayors and chiefs brag, our crime has gone down 19%. I can go on and on. That's about the time we started this uh, get tough immigration problem. I do know uh, we used to have from eight to 10,000 people in jail, and 18% were here illegally. We had 55 murders were committed by illegal aliens. I don't say everybody repeats, but uh, when you look at 18%, that's a high percentage of people in our jails that uh, are here illegal. By the way, that's gone down to about 13% now. So something's happening. So you, you see a direct correlation? There, a definite, okay. no doubt about it. Let me ask this before we take a break uh, in a minute here. Um, we were talking to Bill Montgomery uh, last week. Uh, by the way, how are you getting along with Bill? You're along great. He had good things to say about you on the show. He's a very uh, ethical person. I think the Board of Supervisors, when they all endorsed the other guy, the other guy being Richard yeah, Riley, that Montgomery beat, uh, probably if he went into the bathroom with them by themselves, you know, by themselves, he may say, you know what, maybe, we maybe it's good to have Bill Montgomery. 
Well, it seems like he's brought peace uh, to some extent. Things are looking well, work better. At, yeah, he, he can't tell me what to do. Uh, uh, but on the same token, I'm trying to get along, too. It's not that Bill Montgomery and I got it, got together and said, oh, we're all going to have a love affair. <laughs> he, he's doing it. I'm doing it, trying to... Uh, you know, trying to get along. I'm tired of fighting. I just want to do my job. Seems like like a, oh, everybody's suing me. They're suing the only one that's I'm not suing anybody around here. Yeah, that's uh, right. So I just want to get along. Now, we had to go uh, get the corruption. Uh, we formed uh, the former county attorney, Thomas, and I formed a corruption unit. And when you do, you get people start calling, this guy's corrupt, that guy's corrupt. So you get the information, you try to develop it. If you did not, they're politicians. Uh, they say we threw it in the wastebasket. You can't win. However, I'm not a guy that really likes doing this. I may reevaluate in the future uh, going after corrupt officials and maybe maybe turn it over to the uh, FBI because it takes long, a lot of years to do, as you know. And well, you have, a, you have a better relationship now with the Attorney General's office, too, don't you? Well, Horn, uh, I've known Horn for many, many years. Uh, uh, I do know he's turned some things over to the U.S. Attorney, whether I agree with that or not. Of course, that makes good news. Anything that we do that's released in the media makes great news to report. But it sounds like he was basically just trying to get rid of things. Yeah, well, you know, where, where's Goddard? Uh, these things have been investigation for two years. Goddard never did anything. Do you think if there was anything there, he never would have taken action? Yeah, I guess it helps to but, say that people are under investigation. Oh, they sure... Uh, Make hey, Red Jack, with me. You read the, do you read the Republic? I do. I see the same like paper I'll read. Well, you do read that newspaper? <laughs> Good. Maybe he helped pay the salary of one of my relatives. It's the only paper there is, is what he means. All right, we'll come back uh, shortly after these breaks and uh, from our word from our sponsors, Dennis Wolinchek with Sheriff Arpaio and Jack Wolinchek on Legalese. And I have the flu. Uh, yeah. This is Dennis Wolinchek, and we're back on Legalese uh, every week from 4 to 5, uh, every Wednesday. Our number here, 277-5369. We're here with Sheriff Arpaio, who's been good enough to uh, be in our studios and uh, talk to us for the hour about the issues going on in the Sheriff's Office. So, Sheriff, what's uh, what's the big uh, thing that's going on in the Sheriff's Office right now that's occupying most of your time? <laughs> well, I'm still doing the job, but uh, sometimes you got to fight off the media. Uh, I think this... Uh, investigation that I farmed off to uh, the Pinal County Sheriff as soon as I found out about some allegation that he shipped it out. I want to know the truth. Right. So I'm going to have to face that very soon. I'm going to have to That's the uh, investigation that went to uh, Sheriff Bethew. Yeah, I have to make some tough decisions. I will make the decisions. The Sheriff uh, doesn't make decisions. He's nice enough to have looked at everything. It's getting close to completion. Yep. So very soon I'm going to have to make a decision. Now we got this $99 million thing that everybody's having a lot of fun, especially uh, Mary Rose Wilcox. But this has been going on eight years. It hasn't cost the taxpayers any money. It's just one barrel is one pot of money, the other is the other. And it was intermingled because of uh, accounting uh, situations for the last eight years. But nobody stole any money. The taxpayers don't have to pay more taxes. I've been in the black every year. In other, words, in other words, there's a fund set up, like, what is it, a pension type fund? No, no, this is a fund for the jail tax, which I went public. Is that the RICO fund? Well, no, this is a fund that we remember the people voted for, yeah. which I went public uh, in the past. And so it's a special fund to run the jails. I see. Then you have the general fund for all our other activities. But the employees were mixed because of computers and a lot of problems that occurred. So they would have been paid no matter what. Anyway, it's just which... Which bushel? Right. So now we're so right to find it. And, and uh, we've had, because of lawyers. But uh, the paper reports, uh, the, the, the county's position is that it has to be paid back. Paid back on paper. It's all paper now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And as far as anything in terms of wrongdoing there, was there, was there any possible wrongdoing? No, there was no intention. It was a computer, and uh, uh, the, the audits were uh, done by the county. But it was so complicated and nobody really caught this. Uh, we were probably in error or two when we were paying deputies from one fund instead of the other. But they would have been paid anyway. So there's really no corruption or anything. I think everybody agrees with that, except how you read the newspapers or a couple of board of supervisors that we've investigated. Yeah. Are, uh, uh, 
coincidentally, they're out front blistering away, but that's okay. Well, you know, there's been uh, also, speaking of the supervisors, uh, there was uh, obviously uh, one of the supervisors' wives, Fulton Brock, was uh, in your jail. And I guess I heard somewhere that she was complaining publicly about the condition in the jail. Did you hear that recently? No, I wish she would mention me as she was, but uh, we treated her nice. Uh, we isolated her. She's uh, apparently been complaining about the food, uh, from what I heard. Oh, okay. Well, and I asked to have conjugal visits with her husband or her strange well, husband. Well, that doesn't happen in our jail. Well, what about that? There's, there was talk about the fact that uh, she was getting some special treatment, that Fulton Brock was uh, seeing her in the jails, and there was some kind of special treatment. Do you know anything about that? Well, I don't know if it's special treatment. Uh, uh, we had to be careful for security reasons. He's well known, as, and we didn't want anything to happen to the wife either because of all the publicity. So we make sure our image are, are safe. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you were arrested with all your high profile, we would probably put you in a room by yourself, which isn't very nice, by the way. <laughs> well, they think not. we have a beautiful room with TV I'll pass and on everything. That. Yeah. I'll pass on that one. But uh, by the way, what do you think about what's going on now with this uh, Fiesta Bowl uh, alleged scandal in the paper that we see every day? Any thoughts on that? The only thing I have to say about the Fiesta Bowl, I have a connection with the Fiesta Bowl. That's riding in the parades. Right. I ride you don't take any tickets to games no, at no, all? No, no, no. I could have. I don't do that. I've been around 50 years in law enforcement. I do have my own ethics, too. But you know, one of your deputies, I believe, Aaron Brown, was it? Was, uh, yeah, he's, uh, according to the papers, we're investigating that. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Um, he was allegedly what, uh, supposedly, uh, the allegation in the paper is, is that he was running a security company on the side. Yeah. But you weren't aware of that? I didn't know he had his own company. I knew he was... Uh, working with off-duty deputies uh, to uh, help. Which is perfectly legal. Yeah, yeah everybody does, does it. Uh, but the only connection I have is riding on top of my tank with my wife in the Fiesta Bowl. In fact, I should be riding inside the tank with all the threats I've been getting. I've been getting they're picking up even more and more from Mexico. But it doesn't bother me because I still go meet all the illegals. And so I don't care about these. Bombs that threaten the well, I got to say, in the, twi in the 20 years you've been sheriff, well, 18 going, 18 on, 20. going to 20, when, when, when everybody in, in this town is being accused of something or other in the paper every day, uh, for all those years they have never ever found anything where you have put your hand in the till, taken free tickets, any of the stuff that we're hearing about now. This whole fiesta ball thing, obviously, you didn't uh, partake in any any kind of uh, special perks. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't take I, I don't take tickets, free tickets to ball games. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with it. This is something the legislature has to look at. I'm not really criticizing that, but um, first of all, I don't like football <laughs> and basketball. What's your favorite sport? Well, it's basketball. The Boston Celtics are my favorite team. I grew up with them, uh, and. Um, I'm not afraid to say. It sounds it. like they're going to play the Knicks, I guess. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a typical politician. I tell the media around the country that I'm a Boston Celtics fan. Well, how come you're not a Phoenix Suns fan? Because I'm a Boston Celtics fan. Oh. Now, do you want me to say I'm a Phoenix Suns fan to pick up some votes? I don't care. Do you want me to say that I'm not going to lock up the illegals because I worry about the Hispanic vote or the Chamber of Commerce? No, I don't care. What do you think about them getting rid of Kendrick uh, Perkins? Well, I, I don't know. I, I still got a gut <laughs> feeling that may be a good move. Let's yeah. wait for the playoffs. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I was watching the uh, the reality show. I don't know if you've seen that. There's a reality show now on the Celtics. It's a great, yeah. it's a great show, great. yeah. Yeah, uh, my favorite team, too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow, there goes all your clients. Oh, yeah. Well, they're going to play the Knicks. They're not from New York recently, so it's a tough one for me. So we'll see what happens there. Um, in your book, Sheriff, uh, we only which one? Well, I got two. You got two. Stuff as sheriff the one that like you actually read, Joe's Law. Law. Joe's yeah. Law. Joe's Law. Well, no, that's the one that you said that you didn't really read carefully. Right? Why do I have to read something that I lived in? I mean, <laughs> what, what, what do I have to read my own book for? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. But the other book, I guess. You said you don't like dirty cops, right? That's an important thing. I locked up a, a lot of uh, federal agents. And uh, obviously, you were, you were alluding earlier to what's going on with uh, your chief deputy being investigated. But you're the one who sent that out, correct? To oh, you mean the allegations? The allegations. Like bar, uh, inside yeah. uh, deputy chief. Yeah, I sent that out right away. Yeah. You take that stuff seriously, I know. 
Yeah, I'm not saying he was corrupt. This is more, uh, this was not a criminal. This had to do with policies and in violating internal policies. That's what this is about that I'm looking into. Yeah. And uh, you've actually, uh, as I read your book, you've actually arrested more than one corrupt cop for dealing drugs mm -hmm. and things like that, haven't you? Yeah, I bought uh, dope from cops, too. Chicago. Yeah. yeah I, I, why don't you tell us that story before we're done here? The one that was kidnapped in Chicago. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was in Cops. That was in Washington. Oh, that was in Washington. But uh, I thought somebody invited you into their car, and uh, you then had to spend a night in jail or something. Oh, that was when my uh, my son Rocco, uh, the night he was born, when I was undercover. That's it. That's it. And you know, in the feds, if you front the money for the dope. You hope you get it back because if you don't, you got to write a million reports. Right. So I had to wait uh, 10 hours on a street corner for the guy to come back. As he was coming back, the cops arrested him with my with dope. With you? No, with my dope. But they want to arrest you. No, they, no, 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 no. What I did was to find where my dope was. I told the cops, put me in jail with this guy. <laughs> oh, so you would find out where yeah, so I'm in jail with this guy. So what are you doing with my dope? I paid you out front. Oh, we put it in a garbage can before we were shot by the Chicago police. So my son is being born. I'm in jail. So I got released. Uh, you know, they sneaked me out to go see my son. I had the heroin, the evidence. So did you right find out what, from him any information? Yeah, I arrested him. I made buys from this guy. This Maybe. was the second buy. So I, I got a lot of interesting stories uh, in my lifetime. Oh, I bet you do. But uh, we've only got one minute left here. So uh, tell us your most interesting story, if you can, about uh, your career. Oh, that's a tough one. All right, that's a tough. One. Well, let me ask you this: any uh, any other ideas for the jails, like the pink underwear? I'm running out. Yeah, I got an idea with pink underwear, which I'm going to do as soon as I get. I got to pace myself. But we sell <laughs> pink underwear, millions of them, to raise money for the posse. Now, one side says my badge, the other side says Gojo. So I'm changing Gojo to Vamos Jose. <laughs> so that's the new underwear that's coming out at a Mexican restaurant next to you. That's where I'm going to launch the. Yeah, sale. right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We've, uh, we're had, we've had the pleasure of Sheriff Joe Arpaio for the hour. This is Dennis Wollincheck, and we'll be back next week on Legalese. Um, we'll be. Uh, uh, here uh, with you again and uh, look forward to it next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Till then, see you.